Hey everyone, Jimmy here. It's February 17th and SmartThings has rolled out a pretty significant update to their new app. I figured uh, we'd open it and check out some of the new stuff. So this is app version 1.6.27 on iOS and 1.7.27 on Android. Um, so as you can see, it's totally different straight from the get-go. So the, the home screen here is uh, totally different than the old version of the new app, or some of you might call it Smart Things Samsung Connect. So gone are the, the tabs across the bottom for um, the dashboard and devices and automations. Everything's all kind of one fluid screen here now. Um, and the first thing I noticed after kind of getting everything organized here was that the status of the tiles for each device updates a lot faster than the old version. So that's good because the old version was horribly slow. Um, I don't think it's quite as quick as a classic version yet, but it's uh, definitely an improvement over the old version. Um, so everything, since there is no tabs across the bottom, everything is either tucked away into the menus in the, the upper corners or, or it's kind of down through the bottom. So you can see um, you know, Smart Lock Guest Access, Scenes, Smart Home Monitor, and then the, what you have is all these, uh, your rooms kind of listed below that. And that kind of brings us to the, the first uh, pretty good improvement here is that in the upper right, if you click the three dot menu, and go to reorder, you can now change the order of your rooms. So for example, you know, if, if this room is a little bit more important, I would wanna shuffle it towards the top, um, or if or I have one that, you know, I really don't use that often, I'd shuffle it towards the bottom. What that does, it then updates the order on your, your home screen here. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is you can't really hide a room totally. Um, so really, any, any room that I don't use very frequently, I just have down at the very bottom. So, you know, laundry room, don't use that that, that often. So, um, the other thing uh, that's nice here is uh, you can edit modes now. And I'm not going to go into it because it'll show my my address, and that's not cool. But um, so if I hit manage home here, you can now go in and you can edit the name of modes. You can't add modes yet. Um, you really can't even do that in the classic app. You have to log into the, the website to do that. Um, but it's possible. You can also change the wallpaper that's behind um, everything here. So, uh, but yeah, so from the home screen here, uh, if you tap into one of these items, you'll get kind of the details behind it. So for example, you know, smart lock guest access, this page, if you use this smart app, looks pretty much the same, so no changes here. Um, but like scenes, for example, all these icons are totally different. Um, and you can, now there's this concept of favorites. So you can see I have quite a few scenes, but the ones that I want to show up on the dashboard, um, I, you can add to favorites. And that's just a, in the, on iOS, this is a case of holding and dragging it up to the, the favorites section. Sometimes it takes a little finesse, there it goes. And now you can see it's added to the, the home screen here. Same idea with rooms. So if you, you know, you go into one of these rooms, you can drag things up. And I haven't found a limit yet on the, these. I've, um, I think I got up to six in one room before kind of thinking that was a little much, but um, so you can drag items to your, your favorite section there. And that's what will here show up on your home screen. Um, and one thing, I guess, while we're down here looking at these device tiles is the, the icon changes depending on the, um, the status of the device. So you can see in my outside room here, uh, the front porch is on. So the icon is like a, a black with a pink slider, whereas my deck is off. And those, the three bulbs there are all on, they kind of glow orange. You see a, and here's like a, a bulb that is off as kind of a gray symbol. So. And if I were to, to quickly want to change one of these, you just tap the, the tile above kind of the dividing line, and that brings you into, or that quickly changes the status of, of that light. In this case, a light. 
you know, same idea if it was a, you know, a garage door opener in this case or a lock or anything like that. Um, the other menu on the, the home screen here in the upper left is where you're going to find your settings, your account information, um, change locations if you have multiple locations, things like that, your, your history. Um, it's now named history and the old and the previous version was named notifications. So this is a, a better kind of representation of what this section actually does. So as you know, notification history, activity history, things like that. Um, also in this hamburger menu in the upper left, you can get kind of the old version of just a device list. Um, and one kind of cool thing here is if you kind of drag down, there's now a search function. So and he's got a, a history, right? So if you wanted to, weren't quite sure what room a device was in or anything like that, or if you wanted to quick it, kind of jump to it, you can tap into it and go in straight to the device page from there. Um, let's see, anything else new here? Uh, not really, otherwise, these are where kind of they moved some of those tabs from the the previous uh, version of the app are now kind of hidden over here. So you see automations, same functionality here, just a different kind of look and feel to the UI that they're using. And it's it's all based off of Samsung's one, U, one UI. So that's kind of the direction they're moving with this app. Uh, okay, so let's go back. From um, here, another thing you'll notice is is really every single device page is different now. So if you, you tap below the line on the tile there, it'll bring you into the, the, the full page itself. So you can here you can see everything's kind of out in big chunky tiles. Uh, so kind of one that I found that looked, I thought looks a lot better is a, a thermostat device page now. <clears throat> looks pretty cool. Uh, so you can kind of, you know, if you want to change the temperature, you kind of drag these sliders across and it, it sends the change over. Um, and so here's kind of what a thermostat one looks like. If I kind of jump back and this is a, my living room lamp is a, a full color bulb. You have a color picker, dimmer, temperature, things like that. And then the only other one I thought that was interesting was your, uh, like a multi-sensor. Kind of has everything, you know, it's nice. It's a little easier on the eyes in my opinion. I know this is kind of a, personal preference thing, but everything, you know, is big tiles, easy, fairly easy to read, things like that. Um, the one that thing that I did notice that had a little more functionality now is if I go into the one for my hub, so I have a, a V3 hub, uh, so then kind of the newest hub that uh, SmartThings has, or Samsung has. The one thing I noticed different here is you can now, if you tap on the kind of the refresh symbol on the device firmware update tab, you can now choose what type of firmware updates to allow. In the, in the previous version, you can only turn it on and off. And so you really couldn't tell if you were allowing all firmware updates or if you were allowing um, firmware updates for everything except for bulbs. So, um, there you, so you can now choose the same three uh, settings for firmware updates as you have in the, uh, the web IDE. Okay, um, so moving away from the home screen, the uh, let's go into one of these rooms again. There's a couple unique, or I guess I am already in the room here. Um, a couple unique things here. So in the upper right, if you hit the, the three dots, you can see there's dialogues now for managing room, adding devices, and so you can kind of move around your devices. So if you do manage room, this is where you can choose the wallpaper. So there's all these different wallpapers now that you can choose from that go behind it. The, uh, the the background of the room. You can't add your own pictures or anything. I don't know if they intend on doing that in the future, but um, there are several things you can choose from here. It's, some of them are a little easier to tell. I guess the intent, you know, a towel could be a bathroom or something like that, but some of these are kind of, I don't know what decorations these twigs and the, the vases are supposed to be, but anyway, so you can choose a different wallpaper for your, your rooms. Uh, for moving devices, so, you know, add devices from other rooms here. You can just pick different devices that you would want to move over to this room. Um, one thing kind of while we're talking about rooms is uh, when I first launched the app, it did force me to put devices into a room. So previously you could leave devices kind of unassigned without a room. 
this did force me to to pick a room so you could always just create a room that was just miscellaneous stuff if you wanted to um yeah so that's kind of the idea behind rooms and we talked a little bit about the fu functionality of favorites um and how that works so okay so back to the home screen uh, as you can see kind of navigating around is pretty quick um, there's not really much kind of lag between uh, kind of poking around the app. Uh, one other thing, so if you go to add a scene now, this, besides kind of different icons, is pretty much the same, but there is one thing that is new now. Um, if you go to add an action, so before when you were creating a scene or editing a scene, you could only add devices to change it to, and it's, you know, that's lights, thermostats, locks, things like that. You can now add changing the mode to a scene. So um, this is something, so the new app does not support the routines function that the, the classic app does. So I have a feeling this is kind of one step closer to, to moving where kind of the future of routines will, will go from classic to new app. So now from a, a scene, you can change the mode for your, your location. You can also control devices kind of all in one. And you know, you can do anything controlling fans, lights, locks, everything all from a, from a scene. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of a little bit buggy on the scene side, but, um, so that's kind of something new as scenes is adding, changing mode as an action to the scene. Uh, one other thing, I guess I should have gone, let me go back in here real quick. Um, if I go into this scene, create a new scene, yeah, let's call it test. Um, under a device, so I should have pointed this out while I was here before, you can now sort this list in three different ways, room, A to Z, or Z to A by the device name. And this is something really that was needed. You know, in the last version of the app, it seemed like every different every list of devices had a different way of sorting. You know, some of them sorted by the room order, some of them sorted alphabetically. Some of them, I think the dashboard picker on the, the last version was seemingly random and just the whatever got refreshed first is that's what order got added. So now there's a nice way you can switch up how you want to find devices in this list, which is a, a very nice change over in the last version of the app. Um, so that, that applies to both scenes and um, creating a, a custom automation. So that's cool. Um, speaking of the of custom automation, so let me, there's one new thing over there. Um, so if you haven't used this before, this is actually a pretty neat little tool in the new app. And it's kind of a, as you can, as you can see, it's an if then, or if then, um, set up. And the cool thing here is you can actually have multiple ifs and multiple thens. So you can have multiple action, multiple, um, criteria to kick off an, an automation. And the one new thing here is, I, I believe this is new, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but you can now select multiple modes as a criteria for your if section. So um, I'm just going to pick random stuff here. but um, So you can see you can now have multiple modes that go into validating this um, the if section. This might make sense if you were using um, an or statement, so when any of the, the following conditions are met. Um, that way you could restrict some of your automations by, by mode. But, so that's something new on the uh, custom automation side. Now, they're still, I checked, they're, they still have limits around the actions that you can take. You still can't unlock any doors. You still can't um, change smart home monitor status automatically. Um, so it remains to be seen whether those will be added or not. So what is not in, in this version of the app, at least. Um, oh yeah. So the, the, the device picker is the same as the scenes one where you can sort it in those three different ways, however you want. <clears throat> uh, okay. So the other, Big change in this version of the app is when you add a device, so the flow is totally different from the, the last version of the app. Um, 
there's kind of still the idea that Samsung puts all their, their devices as kind of priority the, the top here. But now, instead of sorting things by category, they sort them by brand. So you can see every, every brand that is supported by smart things has a nice little icon here with you know devices underneath it. So you could pick something. So I tapped Ikea in this case. <clears throat> and then assuming they all have the same type of device, it sends you straight into picking what hub it goes to. So I only have one hub. You get a warning if it's not a Samsung um, device. And then you pick the room it's gonna go into. And only then, let's see if it works here. This has been hanging up on me a little bit. There it goes. So only then does the hub go into pairing mode and is ready for you to, to join that device. So uh, before you kind of just picked the device and it would go into pairing mode and then you can later put it into a, a, a room. Um, but it is um, there's a little bit different flow now. And this is interesting too. So the new app supports multiple hubs per location, which I don't think Classic did before. It might now, but that's kind of something that has, has happened previously. That's not part of this app, but uh, this app update. But, so yeah, pick a hub, pick a room, and go from there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I had um, found. Oh, one thing because this is a little weird with the with the v3 hub since it does support qr code scanning on the smart things devices this auto detect down here still does not put the the v3 hub into a um, an open pairing mode for um, zigbee and z-wave it's i think this is all only auto detecting uh, LAN devices on your network um, you still have to have if you have a device that's not technically supported by smart things, um, you still have to go in and pick a, pick a supported device in order for it, the hub to go into general inclusion mode for Z-Wave and Zigbee. So kind of a little workaround you have to do with the, with the V3 hub, but that still is kind of the same here. But All right, so yeah, that's, um, that's all I had found. So let me know if you guys have seen anything else. Um, Otherwise, in my opinion, this is a, a pretty good update um, as far as usability of the new app. Um, still a little bit ways to go in features that are missing from Classic. Um, we'll see if some of that stuff gets brought over before they fully retire it, but I hope so. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a worthy upgrade in my opinion. All right, have a good one, everybody.